In this one, I'll show you one technique for removing silver from silver-plated scrap, which is pretty easy to find, and I got all this silver here for less than $25. We're also gonna test the electrolyte solution. I have a hydrochloric acid solution I wanna use and see what kind of results we get. Also keep track of uh, how much silver we're getting off of some of these items. So thanks for tuning in and let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is uh, we're going to make a salt water bath and I'm just using tap water for this so I'm going to do I'm going to do about 800 milliliters in each beaker so I'm going to actually do two liters here and then we're going to measure out Two hundred grams of salt. One hundred grams of salt per liter. So two hundred grams of table salt and two liters of water. And then we're going to take this over and heat this up. Turn that 280 degrees. Now while we're waiting for that uh, to get up to temperature, I bring it just about to a boil and then I'll let it cool down. I'll show you how I made um, my cathode and anode. My anode, which will clip to the spoon, is on the positive feed. You can use a 12 volt battery. I've got a DC power supply. Don't use AC out of the wall, won't work. You need a DC power supply. On the positive charge, we're gonna clip to the spoon or to the piece. On the negative charge, we're gonna hook up to the cathode, which is a piece of stainless steel that I cut down to, I believe this just under seven inches. And then when coiled, it fits down inside there. So all I did here was just cut a piece of stainless steel. This was actually from a, a dishwasher door. Um, I drilled two holes in one side of it. And then I'm just going to bend it around this flashlight handle here because that was about the right size. And it's okay if I misshape it. What I want is more of a flat side just so I can drill my holes and run the copper wire through those holes. So now I want to clamp this. When I'm done, I can squeeze it back out then so we've got um, you know, a better cylinder. Okay, so we have our salt water dissolved. Um, two liters of tap water and 200 grams of uh, just regular table salt. So what we'll do here is... Graduated cylinder here, we're going to add the 100 milliliters of hydrochloric acid. I've tried clipping here or clipping here and uh, you know you always get a little bit that's either not going to be in the solution or if it's in the solution you corrode the clip. I've tried half and half which also works well. It actually works the best. It takes twice as long. So for this experiment um, I guess we'll uh, I have had these clips let loose so I kind of dig the teeth in a little bit. So here what I've done is just taken a, a regular rubber stopper and this one, you know, some of them have holes in it. The one I used actually has two holes, which works good. Um, you can just drill a hole if you have any stopper. Just drill it far to one side maybe because I take a razor knife 
and uh, just cut through and make a slit on the edge and I kind of take a little extra out of on the two sides so that when you clip it on to the rim it grabs on so I'll make sure that holds pretty tight fun trick eh? Actually, I did that backwards here typically I'll just slide this up to my first hand lower that in now the only reason I'm using these graduated cylinders is just because it's best way to see this experiment. This will uh, this will definitely. I mean, you could use a five gallon bucket. You could use, uh, um, you know, beaker, a regular standard beaker. You can use anything that'll um, you know contain a little bit of hydrochloric acid. And I'll get the second cylinder set up. And you can just kind of use that hole there to raise and lower, and it'll stay put. Alright, so let's go ahead and turn them on. Now I like to run around 10 volts. Um, save the life of the cathode, I believe. So we'll turn these down here to get them around 10 volts. A 12 volt battery works, you know, perfectly fine if you don't have a DC power supply. This will fluctuate too as it heats up and you know this will bounce around a little bit. Alright there you have it. So this first tube hydrochloric acid actually we'll say one, two, no hydrochloric salt water bath, hydrochloric and salt water bath. First thing I'm noticing here is I'm getting twice the amps. So this reaction is definite, this electrolyte is definitely producing a larger current. So this should work faster. I'm going to set a timer and we're going to let this run for 10 minutes. And so just to explain, um, anode, cathode, anode pushing out your 10 volts, your red, your positive, is pushing out 10 volts. Cathode is receiving those volts through the solution, through the electrolyte, and it's receiving 5 amps of current. This, without the hydrochloric acid, is only receiving 2 amps. That means there's more resistance. This should actually be warmer than this. I take that back. Let's test and see. Let's go right at the cathode here. Ninety three. Now we're running a little hotter with the hydrochloric acid. Ninety seven, ninety eight, and that'll heat up. These get these get quite hot. Okay, so we took both spoons out at twelve minutes. And you can see in the first test tube, you'll see some copper that plated out on the cathode. And in this first test tube, you'll see that the cathode's in much better shape, actually. It still very much uh, looks like the stainless steel. But we have all this residue, which I believe is, and I'll test for, um, I believe it's lye. So now here, this silver is not coming off as good. And this was the higher end where we had the electrode clamp. That was the problem I had before. And so I might flip this over and I'm just going to put this back in instead of working too hard on that. Let's see what the other 
spoon looks like. Now this was the spoon that was not in hydrochloric acid. This was just salt water. See, it looks like the belly of the spoon comes off good. Look at the back. See if we'll have the same problem with the this side now. Very top. There's some silver hanging on. This actually did a better job. That did do a better job. Let's see if we scrub a little more, if that'll just come off, maybe. Just got plated on. There's more silver in this one. No. We'll save that for a little later and I'll put that back in at a later time we'll get the rest of that silver off of there. But there's the difference. So did a worse job on this one. Let's try another one and see what kind of result we get. We have 12 minutes on each, so first we'll take out the spoon with the hydrochloric. did not have hydrochloric acid. I'm trying to keep these organized. Yeah, it comes right off. Let's see if it comes right off the back. So kind of the same issue on the back of the spoon but I think that's because of it was up against the glass this doesn't want to scrub off real easy so I still am uh, working that through it so after you're finished scraping all the silver off of your items we'll just take our pan here and we'll rinse all of this into a beaker and now here you can see once I washed all of the silver into a beaker and let it settle you can see how we've got some copper some silver chloride and silver in this in this mix so we need to refine it one way to refine it is to just use nitric acid although you do use quite a bit of nitric acid so I actually prefer just to go right to aqua regia and what you'll have is all the copper will go into solution that'll be this green color here and the silver will turn into silver chloride and it will be a pure silver that can just be um, converted using the lye and sugar method which I have a couple videos on that if you want to check those out. On the triple plated silver I got uh, just about a gram per spoon and on the single plated silver I got 0.77 grams per spoon. Thanks for watching. And may all your days be blessed.